Hi everyone, and welcome to another Waver OS video tutorial. In the previous video, we customized the design and experience of our Captive Portal's landing page. In this video, we'll dive into the authentication settings where we define how guests can log into the Wi-Fi, including email, mobile, vouchers, or other login methods. Before we begin, let's clarify what the authentication page is. The authentication page is a critical part of your Captive Portal system, responsible for managing how guests access your network. It prompts users to provide specific login information, captures relevant user data, and offers flexible login methods to suit your access policy. This page can be displayed in two ways. After the landing page, for a smoother introduction, or immediately as the first screen upon connection. Just like the landing page, the authentication page is highly customizable. We can customize it with images and custom text, ensuring a seamless and branded guest experience. Now let's dive in and walk through the settings. First, we will log into the Waiver Admin Panel. For this video, I'll be customizing the authentication page, continuing with the hypothetical hotel named Celestial from the previous video. I'll navigate to the Captive Portal section in the left sidebar. From the drop-down list, I'll select Authentication Page. In the Authentication Page Builder, we'll have full control over the available login methods. We can offer several connection options to our guest, including free guest access for quick and easy logins, Facebook Login, where users connect using their Facebook account, Email Connect, where users enter their email address to access the network, Voucher Access, where guests use a predefined username and password to connect. These can be provided through printable tickets, QR codes, or paid access plans. Vouchers can be managed also via API for integration with third-party systems like hotel PMS, external payment gateways, and more. To be noted, when offering voucher access, we can set different time limits and speed restrictions compared to other login methods. The final option is mobile authentication, which prompts users to verify their phone number via a one-time password sent by SMS before logging in. We can activate one or multiple login methods and offer them all together. In this case, guests will be able to choose the one they prefer. We can also set the display order by assigning each method a priority from one to nine. Lower values appear first. All the text shown to guests can be customized easily through the page text section. An auto login feature is also available, allowing returning guests to reconnect automatically without re-entering their data, ensuring a smoother and quick login experience. The first option we see is free guest access, which allows us to offer a simple and fast connection experience. If we want our Wi-Fi to be completely open, with no password or details required, we can go ahead and select the free guest access bypass page option. But if we'd like guests to provide some basic information before getting access, we can enable free guest access with validation. Once you select this option, you can customize the fields guests need to fill out, like their name, surname, or city. You can also set it up with one simple password that works across the entire property. Each field has a basic check to make sure guests don't leave anything empty before connecting. We can also edit the labels for these fields to better match our setup. For example, I will change name to full name and remove the other two fields. By default, the free guest access title is set to connection via password, and the free guest access text says use a password to get connected to our network. But since we customize the fields to collect only the full name, I'll go ahead and change the title to something like Get Connected and the description text to enter your full name and Wi-Fi password to access our network. I'll click Save and as we can see, the mobile preview updates right away, now prompting guests to connect using only their full name and a property Y password. Also, it's important to know that guest connection data is automatically stored. We can review this by going to the Analytics section and selecting Free Users. This page shows the details of guests who connected using free access or free access with validation. By default, the information collected includes the device's MAC address, first login time, last login time, and the number of visits. Any extra fields we've added, like full name, are also shown here as an additional column. At the top of the page, we also get a quick summary showing the total number of users, how many are returning guests, and how many login attempts failed. If needed, we can easily export all this data with just one click. Now let's move on to guest authentication. The first option is Facebook Login, which allows guests to authenticate using their Facebook account. Using this method, their full profile name and Facebook email address will be stored in the database. The login title is set by default to Login with Facebook, and the Submit button text reads Login with Facebook. 
Both of these can be easily edited from here. You can also customize the Facebook login text, which is the main description shown in this section. As you may notice, the free guest access fields appear in the mobile preview because free access with validation is still enabled. You can disable it or leave it active along with other login methods. Now if we click on the Login with Facebook button, we will be redirected to log in to your Facebook account. Once connected successfully, we'll gain access to our network. To review the details of guests who connected using the Facebook login method, I'll go to the Analytics section and select Facebook Users. Here we can see their Facebook profile name, photo, email address, first and last login times, number of visits, and whether they consented to receive marketing materials. Next, we have the Email Connect method. With this option, guests can gain access to the network by entering their email address. This method also supports extra input fields, which we can fully customize. For example, we might want to ask for additional information like the guest's full name. Just like the previous methods, Email Connect can be used on its own or combined with others. In this case, I'll keep the Facebook login method enabled and deactivate the free guest access with validation. So I'll click Save, and as you can see, the mobile preview now shows the Facebook and Email Connect options. And the full name field also appears in the Email Connect section because we've added it as an extra field. There's also the option to enable OTP, which adds a strict layer of email verification. If this is turned on, the guest will receive a one-time password in their email inbox, and they'll need to enter it to complete the login. To fully customize this process, we can navigate to the OTP validation section in the sidebar. Under the Email OTP page, we have the ability to edit all the on-screen text displayed during the OTP process. This includes the title, main instructional text, label text for the input field, and the messages that appear when the code is either missing or incorrect. Just a reminder, you can configure the email SNTP server settings by going to Campaigns and then Connectivity Settings. Now moving on to the Email Content section, we can configure the email body that delivers the OTP to the user. This includes the email subject, which is by default set to Email Verification, the main message, Something like, please use the code below to verify your email and gain access to the network, and the line introducing the OTP itself, typically phrased as your one-time verification code is, followed by the automatically generated code. Now let's take a look at how it works in practice. I'll connect to the network using my mobile device and tap the connect button to proceed to the authentication page. After entering my email address, I'll click connect again, and the portal now prompts me to check my email inbox for a verification code that was just delivered. So I'll open my email, find the message, copy the code, and paste it into the verification field to complete the authentication process. To review the details of email users, I'll go to the Analytics section and select Email Users. Here, we can see their email address, first and last login times, number of visits, and any additional information collected through the form. Next, we have the Voucher Authentication option. With this feature, we can offer Wi-Fi access to our guests using printable tickets, QR codes, or if we want to monetize internet access through paid plans. If you want to learn more about voucher authentication, the Voucher Manager app, and paid access, just click this video here. Moving on, we have the mobile authentication method. With this option, guests can access the network by entering their mobile phone number. Once submitted, the system automatically sends them a one-time password via SMS. In this section, we can customize all the text shown to guests during the authentication process, such as the title, main instructions, label and validation text, and the SMS spam protection message. The SMS spam protection helps preventing abuse of the system and protects your credit balance by limiting how frequently new OTPs can be sent. The mobile login method also supports extra input fields, which are fully customizable. We might want to ask for additional info like the guest's name, surname, or city. Once I've configured everything, I'll click Save, and the mobile preview will reload and update automatically, showing the phone number field along with any extra fields we've enabled. To activate this feature, we first need to connect the system with an SNS provider. To do that, I'll head to the Campaigns, Connectivity Settings section from the sidebar. This is where we configure that SMS gateway used to send OTPs to guests. I'll start by clicking Enable SMS in the SMS settings. The first step is to select a default country to display to guests. I'll leave it set to United States. Next to it is the retry timeout setting, which defines how long a guest must wait before requesting another OTP. This helps prevent spam and conserves your message credits. 
The system currently supports two providers, SMS Global and Clickatel. For this example, I'll go with Clickatel. Once Clickatel is selected, the system will ask for an API key. This key connects your waiver gateway to your Clickatel account and enables OTP delivery. To get this key, simply log into your Clickatel dashboard, create a new HTTP API integration, and copy the API key provided in the integration details. To tailor the user experience further, we can customize the OTP process from the SNS OTP page found under the OTP validation section. Here, we can modify all the text displayed to users, including the title, the main instructions, the input field label, and the messages shown when the code is missing or incorrect. In the SMS content section, we can also customize the actual text message that gets sent. The default message might read something like, Thank you for visiting our place. Your Wi-Fi code is followed by the OTP. This gives you full control over how the message sounds and lets you match it with your brand's tone. Now let's see it in action. I'll connect to the network using my mobile device and tap the connect button. The authentication page appears, asking for my phone number. I enter it and tap connect again. A message immediately prompts me to check my SMS inbox for a verification code. I open my messages, find the SMS, copy the code, and paste it into the verification field. Once submitted, the system verifies the code and will connect me to the network. To review the details of guests who connected using the mobile authentication method, I'll go to the analytics section and select mobile users. Here we can see the default information along with their mobile number and any extra details collected through the form, such as name, age, or city. Now that we've explored all the authentication method possibilities, let's head over to the page text section. This is where we can customize the main text displayed on the authentication page to match our tone and branding. For the title, I'll write, connect to our Wi-Fi. And for the main text, I'll go with something inviting and simple like, enjoy a relaxing stay with us. I'll click save, and with that, the personalized authentication page is updated to reflect the desired tone and branding. And finally, I'll head to the auto login section. Here we can enable the remember user login data option. This feature ensures that guests who have previously logged in won't be prompted to re-enter their data during a specified period. We can configure this period under Remember from last login. I'll set it to sudden days. Below this, there's the auto login feature. Enabling this will allow the system to automatically bypass the captive portal for guests who are recognized as known. The captive portal will briefly appear but will close automatically, so guests can connect right away without any additional steps. And with this, we've gone through all the authentication options. I hope you found this video helpful and see you in the next one.